Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of voice of radio, so today we need to talk about how the Pokemon Company, and really the Pokemon TCG in particular, is still breaking records. Every time I tell you guys that Pokemon is the number one property in terms of TCGs in the world, people go... How about magic? Now, look, I'm not an expert on Magic the Gathering. Even on my other channel, Wossy Plays, where I cover other card games, I don't cover magic. I don't have that depth of knowledge I believe I need to have in order to cover magic properly. We'll I'll do the old video here or there, but I'm not a, a magic expert. I think that's fair to say. But I can tell you that magic is not even close to Pokemon. Like, not even close. And I'm not talking about player numbers or anything like that. I'm talking about the only real objective measure you can have. And that is sales. And when it comes to sales, Pokemon is number one. And yeah, it's, it's not even really particularly close. Pokemon is number one by a bit of a mile. But what we've had over the past couple of days are some facts and figures. Which show quite how well Pokemon is doing. So, we do have a quote from Simon Benton, Vice President of Pokemon TCG Sales for Europe, who said this. 2022 saw another sensational year for the Pokemon TCG. We would like to thank our retail partners and distributors for their amazing support, which has continued to raise the profile of our products and TCG in particular to consumers. In another record-breaking year, Pokemon is the number one MPD property in three countries and achieved its highest ever position in other key territories, and we look forward to building on this success further in 2023. Now, when it says number one property, it's not talking about card games, it's talking about toys. Toys generally. All toy brands. There's some stiff competition, ladies and gentlemen. There is some very stiff competition. Um, let's go through some facts, shall we? So the three countries where it is the top property are France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. That's what we've got. And we've also seen, so in France, it was a top property with 14% increase in sales. Nearly double the second place. I should give a shout out to the lovely Primal Lugia here who did help me find this information and is an awesome person. Uh, and 14 toys in the top 50? That's a little bit ridiculous, honestly. A little bit ridiculous. It was ranked number four in Germany, up from number nine, with 44% growth. In the UK, it's a number four property, up from number seven. In Italy, it's number four with a 101% increase. It doubled sales. And this is all just absolutely ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And the thing is, it's not just that the Pokemon Company is winning or any of that. It is that it keeps doing more. You know, it won a bunch of awards. You know, it got Europe's top gaining property, Games and Puzzles. Global Top Toy Property of the Year, and Europe's Top Gaining Property Total Toys. So we're not talking about, hey, it's had a little bit of success. We are talking about, firstly, the, the top brand in the world, and secondly, a brand that is still growing. I just showed you all of those figures from a few different countries showing the growth that it's making, and that's the thing that's kind of a little bit out there. It's still growing. It's still doing well. And look, I know that when the pandemic hit, we saw just absolute influx. We know that there is, you know, we had, what was it, Shining Fates. You could not get hold of Shining Fates on release. Shining Fates was one of those sets, and it came down in price very nicely. But when Shining Fates was initially released... You could not get hold of Shining Fates. It was extremely difficult. We saw a similar thing with Evolving Skies, although Evolving Skies kind of came out in the hype time and then also happened to be just a ridiculous set in and of its own right, which, you know, has never gone away. That's still a ridiculously expensive set. And there was that period of time where the Pokemon TCG was kind of a pain. Celebrations actually was another one. Celebrations when it first came out. And it got better quickly. But Celebrations was another one that was kind of a pain on release. And there was a time, largely fueled by the increase in demand because of the damn panic, where it went a bit silly. And Pokemon TCG, the products as a whole, 
were just hard to get hold of. And nowadays, we're not there at the moment. The Pokemon TCG, very... And there are exceptions, obviously. But very few products nowadays actually sell out and become scalped. There are a few products out there that do, and that's sad. But most Pokemon TCG products at the moment are at the stage where they're just not being scalped. It's not worth it. And this isn't some, like, magic thing. This is the hard work of the Pokemon company going, hey... We are too popular. There's too many sales going on. Products are selling out. Let's print some more. And they did. And it's paying off, ladies and gentlemen. And like I say, you know, when we're talking about these kind of things, we're talking about toys generally, not just TCG. But TCG did get a shout out in these results. And make no mistake about it, the TCG is crushing. But what about over in Japan, I hear you ask? Well, they've gone and done that thing again, have Japan. Where they have gone and listed the top selling products over in Japan. And, um, yeah. The overall top selling product on Japanese eBay for the last quarter is... V-Star Universe. Yeah, we probably could have seen this coming, honestly. Because, you see, the special set that came out at the end of year two of the Sword and Shield at the end of 2001 was VMAX Climax, which became the highest selling product on Japanese eBay. And then at the end of 2020, at the end of year one of the Sword and Shield TCG, the set released was Shiny Star V, which became the highest selling product on Japanese eBay. So... We've kind of three years in a row now. Three years in a row, we've seen that the top selling product on eBay when a special set releases is that special set. One thing I do find very interesting is that both Shiny Star V and VMAX Climax actually held the spot for two quarters. So this is a quarter, it's three months. And, you know, Q4 2020 and Q1 2021, Shiny Star V. Q4 2021 and Q1 2022, VMAX Climax. Q4 2022, V-Star Universe. I'm not guaranteeing that Q1 next year is going to be V-Star Universe as the top selling product on the whole of eBay Japan. But I am telling you it's pretty gosh darn likely at this stage if we follow the pattern. Of course, we also saw that Q3 2022 was Lost Abyss. Yeah, that's right, just a regular set. Q2 2022 was the Mischievous Pichu promo. Q3 2021 was the Unagaba promo. Q2 2021 was EV Heroes. And actually, we could go back to Q3 2020, where it was Legendary Heartbeat. That's 10 quarters in a row. Or if you want to put it another way, two and a half years. Where the top selling product on eBay Japan, of everything has been a Pokemon TCG product. So you know what? This is kind of a big deal, honestly, ladies and gentlemen. This is kind of a big deal. The Pokemon TCG just goes from strength to strength. And I have had, you know, some people get in touch who are over in Japan. Some have been polite. Some have been less so. One was just downright really rude. And essentially just saying, look, at the moment, product in Japan is quite hard to get hold of. And this is something we've talked about. And whereas in the West, in UK, US, Europe, etc., product has largely calmed down. Supply has increased and it's keeping up with demand. And that's not to say that every single product is readily available at all times or anything stupid like that. But it is to say that outside of rare exceptions... Product in the West is largely pretty easy to get hold of. It's largely quite, you know, that we're not fighting over many products nowadays. But over in Japan, just like your booster boxes. Now, starter decks are generally actually all right. The Scarlet and Violet starter decks that came out alongside the release of Scarlet and Violet, they're actually pretty sweet. They were made to order on the Pokemon Center online, for instance. And I've just seen them just readily available to buy. But things like Scarlet EX and Violet EX, yeah, they were sold by a lottery system pretty much everywhere, and they're just not available. 
Now, on the resale market, Scarlet is a lot cheaper than Violet, but I told you this in the video the other day, Violet is a much better set. But it's not that easy to get hold of anything, like V-Star Universe. It's still not that easy to go and buy a box of V-Star Universe for a decent price. So over in Japan, they are experiencing shortages, and that's not ideal. But I, I think the important thing to note here is that the Pokemon TCG is, uh, like, as healthy as it's ever been. No, it's not ideal, especially, you know, over in Japan, where a lot of these products are not always easy to find. But the game is healthy, the game is doing well, and that alone has got to be a good thing. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know, and now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about all of this. Tell me how happy you are that the Pokemon TCG is crushing. Tell me anything that's on your mind. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord and chat with us, all kinds of fun things. And you can get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Andy White, who's been one of our supporters for a while now and seems to be a very lovely person. So thank you very much for the support. And for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always. Look after yourselves till next time would ya. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.